So I'm going to discuss on the uh, microbiology issue perspective. I'll explain to you, I'll explain and uh, show you how, why, why it's lab relevant using uh, Asian as, as a model system in understanding of the dye microbiome disease in us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, all in all, basically, as well demonstrated by the past three, uh, the last three speakers, that all because our concern as a species is that microbiome, in fact, play a role in the other um, inductions of prevention of diseases in us, and uh, therefore, uh, it's essential to know that. And uh, this microbiome, on the other hand, vary between uh, peoples and between peoples in different regions. Therefore, first of all, we must know what do we have in order to understand how they affect us. And then, uh, looking at it, uh, looking at actually um, the in two thousand and nine, uh, there wasn't any much. There wasn't much study in Asia except a few reports from Japan. There were a lot from Europe and North America. So we asked, are we different from the rest, from the European and America? And uh, the, the gut feeling is that must be there because we have different people, different ethnicity, different genetic makeup, and different diet and lifestyles as well. So in 2008, we initiated Asia Microbiome Program. Initially, it involved only 10 countries, and the 10 cities are being presented here. And uh, this is phase one, we are now in phase four, and 10 countries are involved. Uh, in the study. So this phase one study nevertheless uh, will give you an impression that in fact the country being involved here which are Japan cities from Japan, two cities from Taiwan, two cities from China, uh, two cities from Thailand and that of Indonesia. Their microbiota makeup I mean, again here seem to be different. There's a certain pattern in it. You can see here there's a lot of bright spots here. There's no bright spot here and a lot of bright spot here. Indicate the abundance of microbiota in these regions, these countries are quite different. So, uh, to, to sh and you can see here the differences here. You can see here that these people, this country here, uh, they are high in this green one, which is Prigodilla, and below in the orange and yellow one. Orange being Bacteroides and yellow being bifidobacterium. This, this bacteria has mentioned uh, many times before by three previous speakers as well. These are the major endotypes in human in general. And in Asia, that's what we observe. So I'm going to show you again that. And it, therefore, I can see that the microbiota in human endotypes are grouped into two. You have one here, which is high in Privotilla, which high in Privotilla, so it's P types here. And then you have another group here that's high in bacteroides and bifidobacteria. So they are truly segregated. And how they segregate, I'm going to show you, it's easier for you to visualize distribution effect. And you can see here that these this are different individuals. The individual variations, in fact, are very big, uh, as we mentioned here before as well. In Japan, for example, there are none, no two persons of same microbiota profile to PCO point. And you can see their differences. Nevertheless, you can see obviously that the Venice microbiota are very different from that Ecuadorian, a lot of Thai, and then even further away from China. And you can see here that from this branch, you, Chinese is closer to that of Thailand, but not entirely, but further away from Indonesia as well. Two extreme. Here we have a bacteroides and bifido and types and via Pritodilla. Interestingly, if you overlap that, with the map to show you uh, continuous changes of microbiota types. So that was in Japan, very high in uh, bacteroides and bifidobacteria enterotypes, very similar to that of European and America. Then the abundance of bifidobacteroides diminished to the west, towards China, Taiwan, Korea, and eventually China. And for China, it goes southward. The abundance of Privotilla increased in going southward with more, more of that in uh, Thailand and even more in, in, in that in Indonesia. The question.
why does it flow? What drives the differences? Is that people gene or the flow? Suspicion, the suspicion, most important suspicion, the first suspicion is food, of course. Yes, we mentioned, as we suggested as well, that those people consume a lot of fats and such fats, especially a high in fact, at least, all right, European and so on. The study was based on the comparison of Italian with that of Af Africa, we mentioned just now as well. Africa, very high in pre very similar to uh, the Southeast Asia. Is this really diet? We, 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 we were a bit concerned for reasons that no, no doubt they eat very differently, different lifestyle, but also they are very different in genetic makeup. So they are different people anyway. So therefore, we repeat the study uh, in choosing two season CD in Asia, in Philippines, very close to each other, only a few kilometers apart. Same people, one very traditional being the rural people, uh, and then the other being the city, of course, you can understand what you can imagine what changes. Omo, for example, is the city to eat fast food. Wow, okay, hamburgers, McDonald's, and so on and so forth. And whereas baby is more traditional, uh, therefore less of fast food, less of sweets and snacks, and next, uh, less of meats as well. So you can see here the fat content uh, consumed in the uh, Omo is 27% versus that lower fat consumption. Other city and microbiota, microbiota in fact show up to be different as well. For this, for example, you can see that these people here eat more fat and protein, basically fast food, burgers, and the endotoral types tend not to be bacteroides and the bacteria. And the traditional diet remain as pre protein. And these are the same people, same genetic makeup, same people, same culture, same culture uh, as well. So, and how far did it take to change? I, I, I'm not going to present the data, but I'm just going to mention that it takes more than one year of eating consistently a different diet to change from one microbiota to that in this particular case. And that has been echoed and refracted in the ability of microbiota to process bowel acid. It's been expected because they encounter more uh, fat in this case. All right. So, and perhaps in this case we conclude uh, fat is the driving diet chain determine our microbiota to be that of bacteroides or that of pre is that is that the case? And when we further when we work on Asian sample, something very unexpected crop up. As being said here, the people in East Asia, Japan, uh, Thailand, uh, Japan, Korea, China, Taiwan, and so on are high in that bacteroides, which is orange color and high in bifidobacterium, which is yellow color. This perhaps reflects their high consumption of fermented food, as well as vegetables, high in oligosaccharides, so it's not surprising. And in Southeast Asia, I mentioned just now, is high in prevotilla, because they consume a lot of plant uh, products and so on, Indonesia and Thailand. However, look at it. Mongolia here is high in prevotilla as well. Mongolia is prevotilla. Same as Southeast Asia, and different from the East Asia. And if you look at the food of Mongolia, Mongolia is the population, the people that eat most animal fats and meats in the world after USA. USA ran top and then followed by Mongolia. And the rest of the world, Europeans, America, European, and so on and so forth, then got some education in very little East Asian So what, what happened? Is that the second compounding can factors that determine microbiota? You said that of fat? We decided to look into it, we scrutinized, analyzed all data, diet surveys, and so on. It turned out to be rather interestingly that there's only one dietary factor that is different between that of the uh, Mongolia and the rest of the people, and that is the type of carbohydrate. Meal. We tend to lump carbohydrate together, but actually they are not the same. So the left hand side here, these are the country, on top these are people. Uh, pre motilla endotypes, the bottom these are the uh, bacteroids endotypes. The bottom you can see, uh, I couldn't quite see well here, you can see the European Americas and the East Asia and so on, on top of the Korea, Southeast Asia and so on. So, this carbohydrate, what's different than carbohydrate? You can see all the top here, indicating the red color, are high in resistant starch, meaning that starch that cannot digest by us. And below, they are low resistant starch. And this carbohydrate we are all very familiar with. European America, you eat basically potatoes with the uh, so sticks and you eat bread as well. And then whereas in East Asia, they eat rice. What kind of rice? You stick 
sticky rice, the Japanese kind of rice, not the Asian rice, the sticky kind, the Indica rice, the uh, Sidika rice. Whereas the Southeast Asian eat the loose rice, the Japanese kind of rice, and then uh, Mongolia eat bodies and millions and so on, high dishes and starch. So, and in fact, it's known that the starch, if you stay in uh, long resident time, is the guts. Um, they have a tendency to absorb bile and bile acid, the bile salt as well. So the uh, freely available bile in the guts is the presence of the resistant starch. And, and the fact is, seem to be so as well. Kiss the rice, Southeast Asia eat a lot of rice more than that of East Asia. East Asia, besides rice, the, the sticky rice, they also eat wheat as well, noodle in the form of noodle. And the type of starch uh, are different as well. The Southeast Asia is the loose rice, high western yeah. starch, whereas uh, East Asia eat the sticky rice. I'm going to link to diet and health as well. And then it's to reflect again by the type of enzyme with the responsible digestion of starch here very well linked together. You can see Prevotila, Prevotila, Prevotila here. Prevotila high in alpha-alpinase and low in alpha glucosidase and vice versa for bacteria if you don't adhere to the types, which in fact link very well with the microbiota they should have. So the working hypothesis is here, isn't it? Right. If a person eat fat, we all eat fat to a certain extent, more in Western than in Asia. So power is being expressed. And the power inhibit prebotella, which is known study report as well. So in this case, bacteria is get to forage. On the other hand, if a person besides eating the fat, also eat a lot of resistant starch, then in this case, they remove the bile acid. In this case, uh, the prebotella is resistant and sensitive to uh, bile acid get foraged over and uh, overrun and overwhelmed that of uh, bacteroides and therefore the increase in diversity as far as we are that's the Southeast Asian kind of uh, kind. and therefore if you put this in the world map it's very interesting here the Asian Asia was done by us uh, the uh, the Africa and, 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 and that of Italy were done by previous work has been mentioned just now North America South Africa were done by also other reports as well you look at it a consistent picture being emerged here. Northern atmosphere, very high in orange, that's bacteriolis, uh, both North America, European, and East Asia. And East Asia took a high in bifidobacterium as well as I mentioned because of the food and that of uh, oligosaccharide for vegetable and fruits and so on. Southern atmosphere, high in bifidobacterium, uh, bifidobacterium, sorry, the green you can see across. And from here you can see that this green color extends to Mount Dashmore in India as well, in fact, and all the way up to Korea, circulating and breaking the East Asia from the European and North America. This is most, most interesting. Implication we talk about that And then, and then perhaps in this case, you see that uh, does the mother to infant uh, uh, vertical transfer would reinforce the microbiota heritage, which has been always believed so. Because more study was done in, the, in Europe, whatever the mother has passed on to the baby, to vagina, must be other uh, locations, and as a result, the baby actually carries the same microbiota, same enterotoxic as the mother. Is it the case for Southeast Asia for prebiotic enterotoxic? This is the Indonesian result. Let's, let's look at this first. Okay, the yellow color here. Sorry, the yellow color. Yellow, sorry, the orange. Uh, so also here, here the blue color here is mother's. Uh, Figure microbiota, all the rest are infant microbiota of the same mother. Alright, red color indicate just birth before one, one week, one month, so it's one week which so here. And then they stay away, it's very different from the mother gut microbiota. Only after 6, 12 months or so, 24 months, then in this case, infant microbiota coins overlaps to them. After weaning, the two coincide during infancy is a complete and but do they get it from other parts of mother besides that of figure samples mother's figures mild are here these are the baby's one alright this is vagina at birth the baby's microbiota is very similar to mother uh, but up it very quickly it deviates from the mother vagina and this is mother mother's milk and baby's saliva so no surprise this oral 
maybe it's liver stress with the mother, but different from the mother. So the baby do not get the enterotypes of the mother in intubation. They only acquire it after the mother. So you can see, uh, it's another story that discussed about the great drill with it, and you can see here basically uh, the pectoride is high in baby birth and gradually decreasing and coincide with the mother, and the other way we feed the bacterium. This is the baptism of the Buddha, Buddha, and the Buddha. So, this is rather interesting. Give us an inkling of how actually the individual developed of enterotypes, microbiota, and driven by, of course, partly by diet, in this case. And which diet, uh, in fact, legume and fruits, the one that uh, baby consume after the meal and could change that. So, uh, that message. Uh, then the question asks is that which healthy uh, microbiota? If you look at the association between the microbiota, it's rather complicated and rather interesting. Bacteroides are pretty large in here. Uh, uh, Bacteroides is here, this European, American, type, East Asian, Southeast Asian type. Uh, blue line indicate positive correlation, red line indicate not negative population. You can see that the Southeast Asian pretty large associated with a lot of pathogens. Shigella and, and, and Enterococcus and others, whereas the European you don't have positive association with that, but you have other problems with IBS and the social microbes. So then, uh, therefore, perhaps in this case, we should give a second thought to our idea of hygiene. We always assume that South Asian is not hygienic, developing, and therefore you have a lot of in the gut. It may have to do with the gut microbiota and the type they have, allowing the pathogen to grow, and therefore you have, for example, costumian pathogens high among Indonesian and Thai, but hardly observed in East Asia, and that is correlated with the endotypes they have. Right? And as one get older, before the bacterium drop, uh, as expected. Before bacterium among uh, Mongolian, Korean, and so on, because of the diet are high, but Korean, for example, drop very fast, and one get older. And Mongolia not very fast, and in Chinese it grow fast. So that indicate there's something for us to work on. How do we maintain it if really that is before the bacteria is that important, which I'm not discussed because we don't have time, but a really important thing. The other thing is that some of the people who are get old, they develop dementia, MCI, lost memory, and so on. So we look at it, you can see that dementia individual microbiota here, normal aging here. You can see that dementia MCI has a low in this group of bacteria here. And what they look at it, look at it. In general, people who suffer with dementia, MCI, low in bacterial disease, and that's what you have. And on the other hand, high in Bifidula, and that's what Southeast Asia has. Implying that less likely for European and American to develop dementia as compared with Southeast Asia. In this context, and this is to do with uh, chronic inflammation, as indicated by the level of uh, pro inflammatory cytokine and, and so on. But it does imply that in this case, we why we should have bacteroides because prevent dementia and prevent uh, gut infection and so on. But we know that the kind of diet we have high fat induced uh, metabolic disorder, type 2 diabetes, and this is not, not necessarily good as well. And the theory itself is not going to be there. Uh, we mentioned that as well. Uh, fat, uh, fatty acid power suppress commensal, result in inducing of epithelial type junction, result in penetration of LPS and grand bacteria induce chronic inflammation and thus uh, causing all the type 2 diabetes problem. So therefore, the working diabetes seems to be that, all right, it consumes no fat, less resistant starch, you have bacteroides. And if you consume more resistant starch, you have brevodilla, and you consume a lot more fat, like the Western uh, diet, then this case, it's going to kill everything that you have type 2 diabetes. And so on. So, but on the other hand, looking at Asian perspective, we find it odd. Why? Because the study was done in European. It's quite common sense that you more fat and therefore become fat. But in Asia, so it's Asia, for example, we eat very little fat, very little meat because we are poor. And then, but we, we, are, we do have fat people as well. And what do we eat? We eat carbohydrate. We eat carbohydrate and we get the fat. So the worst question, for those people who are fat in Southeast Asia, uh, is the gut microbiota as we predicted it would be low in comments, uh, bacteroides, bifidium bacterium, and so on, and result in boosting up of that junction. We we'll choose a place, Kalantan in East Malaysia, and seen here, fat consumption here, 
underweight, underweight normal weight, uh, overweight, and obese can see fat consumption. Over, uh, obese is not more, much more than their normal, and here is much higher than uh, overweight. On the other hand, obese consume a lot more carbohydrates. So these people eat carbohydrates to become fat. And what? Like what? Look at it. Look at it. So as expected, if recent, by the way, the Malaysian eat this and stuff, <coughs> it will kind of rise. If they, in this case expected, the bacteriolitis, sorry, uh, the P fetal bacteria increase with the consumption of uh, rice, carbohydrate, and, uh, and reduction of bacteriolitis expected. More importantly, look at all the other conventional bacteria. The P fetal bacteria and so on, all the same, all of them stay the same. No change. And in fact, none of the subjects we study have type 2 diabetes. So the interesting implication, we don't have time to discuss, just show you the reason. And therefore, this is the thing. So they, they, we have a working hypothesis. And uh, we, we are doing study on that. The working hypothesis is that from what we have studied so far since the deep, we have a deep picture, is that if you have a choice of how you get sick in the later life part of your life and how you die, either you have dementia, you have uh, type diabetes or that you have uh, IBD, IBS, and so on and so forth. But that is just, can we do something with that understanding the mechanism that trickle off these diseases? So, is it possible that for those of us that love meats, eat love sticks and meats and so on, then in this case, instead of eating meats, your nice piece of sticks with uh, bread and we love bread and then potato, perhaps you change it and eat with uh, the loose rice, the Thai rice, or the millets, or something else. And though for us, they eat very little meat and fat, perhaps we can eat a bit more fat, or that we change our rice to that of sticky meat. And this is a nice theory we're testing on. We are testing it in Mongolia. A group of people are taking the loose rice, Thai kind of rice, uh, to see whether there's changes and whether there's changes in their health status. And how does it go? I can tell you now, uh, it's very bad. Why very bad? A lot of dropout. The, the subjects, the Mongolian complain that Thai rice that looks to Khan rice is not for human consumption. Back in a few days, it's not for human at all. So, it, I mean, come back to perhaps many nutritionists uh, who say that, understand that, that even healthy food, it must be tasty, it must be accepted by local culture, local habits in order to be able to sustain and to be effective. And with that, I thank you.